Hi, this is a Yesterday's Moose production, and today we're playing Simpsons the Arcade Game. The audio was very loud on my end, so I had to turn it down. But I'm going to let the beginning play so that we can see all of the information and all of the animations and everything like that. And uh, for this Let's Play, I'm going to do a little bit of Let's Play and Learn, where I provide some information about Simpsons the Arcade Game, as well as Simpsons the Series, etc, etc. I think that's everything, actually. I'll just go ahead and get started. Got Marge, Homer, Bart, and Lisa. Fortunately, unlike TMNT that I played before, Homer. I can change characters during gameplay. So I will be doing that. So obviously the story is that there's this diamond that Maggie accidentally took from Smithers and Mr. Burns and now the Simpson family have to get it back, get her back, and uh, it's a beat-em-up. One of the better Simpsons games that are out there. I think I'm gonna go here. Oh, because that happens. And then there's the Noiseland Arcade. So as I said, I'm going to be providing information about Simpsons, the arcade game, and other such stuff throughout my gameplay. See if I can space it out. Probably not. I want to get to all of it. There's Principal Skinner and... What's his head? <laughs> I'll put his name on the screen now. I forget his name. I'm going to let uh, this thing happen that's going to happen if I stand here too long. It's kind of fun. In order to encourage you to go faster and play the game. The animated finger comes and boots you along. And there's some mysterious goons that are not from the animated series at all. They were just entirely made up for this game. Martin, that's the kid's name. Good, now I don't have to put it on this screen anymore. <laughs> Anyways. Ah, so I get stuff from the tree. That's good. So this uh, arcade game came out after the success of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game, which is also from Konami. I said that weird. Anyways. The game itself was developed in 1990 and was released in 1991. Oh, wait. I'm gonna get to this boss. This guy is Professor Werner Von Braun from Bart the Daredevil episode, otherwise known as the Truckosaurus episode. When Homer is in Moe's bar, he's watching this wrestling match on TV and simultaneously Bart and his friends are also watching it on TV. And Werner Von Braun is going up against Rasputin, the friendly Russian. So at this point in time, they really didn't have a lot of stuff to, to draw from as far as Simpsons lore because it had come out so quickly, the uh, Simpsons TV show had basically, oh, let me change to Marge. Get to see a little bit of her. Oh, I forgot, I should show off everybody's moves. I'll, I'll do that soon enough. So yes, this game was developed in 1990 and released in 1991, so... The Simpsons has only been on for like basically a year because The Simpsons came out in 1989 in December with Simpsons roasting on an open fire. The episode where they get Santa's little helper. Ooh, bonus stage. 
Gotta pump up a balloon where you have some scaling that was very popular with arcade games at this time. It was their new toy to play with. So let me go ahead and do all of Marge's moves. We're in Krusty Land! <laughs> I can't really do a crusty voice, but I can kind of do the crusty laugh. So here's the regular attack, obviously. There's like pressing both buttons together. There's two different kinds of jump attack. And uh, if I had another player, there's like dual attacks that you can do where two, uh, two characters team up together. Oh, there's Santa's little helper, and they do like a special move. There was a baby back here that's like Maggie's nemesis, and... Oh, there's uh, Dr... Oh man, I'm really... I, I forgot to put his name down. Okay, so there's the bus driver. Man, I have not watched Simpsons in so long. How's my hair? So this is what happens when Marge stands around. Okay, so there's the bus driver, whose name I can't remember. I'm gonna put it on the screen now. And the doctor, Dr. Marvin Monroe, that's his name. Otto, that's his name, again. Yay, I don't have to look it up. Otto, that's his name. Wow. It's got, it's, it has to have been like a decade since I've watched The Simpsons. That's why I'm forgetting everybody's name. You would think that you would remember that sort of stuff. Oh, there's Milhouse. Remember his name. Milhouse, I didn't write this down, but I think Milhouse was not originally Bart's friend. And then they had like those commercials but uh, for Butterfinger. And I think... He was invented just for those commercials, and then he was part of the series. So now I'm Lisa. And I'll show off all her moves, and then I'll go back to Homer, and... Then I will play as Bart, and I'm gonna stay as Bart for the rest of the game, because Bart is actually my favorite character to play as in this game. There's putting, uh both buttons together. Jump attack one, jump attack two. I find that uh, Lisa's not super effective as far as attacks are concerned. And there's a pink ape, which of course looks like Homer. I don't think he's been in the series at all, but that's something that they would have totally done in the series. Uh, there's the bear. Apparently this bear was in the first episode. I don't remember that. I'd have to like watch the entire episode again. Um, but the bear is diff- oh there's her idol animation. The bear is from the uh... Call of the Simpsons episode where there was a Bigfoot or they were searching for Bigfoot and Homer was mistaken for Bi Bigfoot. I'm reading all of the, the information I have here out of order. So they, they thought uh, Homer was Bigfoot and they were conducting experiments on him and they're sa they said he's either a below average human being or a brilliant beast. And then Marge is like, Oh, Homer, my brilliant beast. Ah, and there's Bongo from Life is Hell, which is another Matt Graining, or is it Matt Groaning? Who knows? I'm going to say Graining, Matt Graining production. It was a comic strip that uh, I believe was like syndicated in a bunch of different uh, newspapers. And... Um, I distinctly remember being in one of my, uh, there was like an art house free newspaper that's available in the city that I live in. 
and uh, they had Life as Hell in there, so I was very much aware of that before uh, Simpsons became this big thing. I pretty much was aware of it uh, since the Simpsons appeared on the Tracy Allman show. Nobody know, has ever seen it, I'm sure, or remembers it. I vaguely remember it because I was always staying up just to watch the, Sim the Simpsons uh, shorts that happened in it. Uh, the Tracy Allman show... Okay, time to go back to Homer. Momentarily here. Tracy Allman show uh, apparently was from 1987 to 1990, so it was still running while The Simpsons were running. And I, I do remember watching those Simpsons shorts. And uh, they were funny back then. And uh, they were my favorite part of the Tracy Allman Show. The Tracy Allman Show was basically a comedy sketch variety show. So that, that'll that give you an idea of what that was about. Tracy Allman was like a, a relatively well-known comedian uh, from London. And she was like big in London and then came to the States to do that show. Am I in Dreamland now or the forest? No, I'm in Springfield Cemetery, Discount Cemetery. Okay, Homer regular attack. Homer pressing both buttons. Homer... Flying attack one and flying attack two. I really wish I could do like the dual attack thing. So I wonder if these enemy guys were ever in the, the TV series in any capacity, like background characters or maybe even in the Simpsons movie. I kind of doubt it. So the Simpsons arcade game has been released a few times. Uh, it was available on Xbox Live Arcade for the Xbox 360, uh, the PlayStation Network, and uh, PlayStation 3, but was removed from the stores in February of 2012. And then Arcade 1UP re released an arcade cabinet in 2013 for the 30th anniversary, I'm assuming, of the game. Okay, finally gonna be Bart, and then I don't have to change characters again. There's the two button attack, there's flying attack one, flying attack two, regular attack, idle animation. Did I do, did I do homers? It's kind of odd that they would allow him to say that specific thing in an arcade game. You would figure they would censor that, but he said it. I'm of course playing this on emulation because you can't get this game anymore. Like I said, it's not available anymore and I'm not going to start buying arcade one-up cabinets. That's for sure. As much as I would like to, it seems like... I would not have the space for it. Although my dream, if I ever came into a large sum of money, was to have a house where I would specifically have a video game room where I would have arcade games and pinball tables. Because that's something that you can't emulate. You can certainly emulate arcade games, but you cannot emulate pinball games. There's a few of them that I would like to have, like Pinbots, um, The Black Knight, and my favorite one, Bonsai Run. Really like that one. It's a very unique arcade game. <laughs> ah, we have the obligatory elevator stage in a beat-em-up. Gotta have an elevator stage. 
So, for this arcade game, they brought back some of the voice actors. They have Dan Castellaneta as Homer, Julie Kavner as Marge, Yeardley Smith as Lisa. Remember Herman's Head? Remember that TV show? I do. I used to really like it. And Yeardley Smith was in that show. It's kind of like a TV show version of... Oh, what's that? Uh, I didn't write it down because I'm just... This is something I just came up with now. Anyways, it, it's, it's like a TV version of having emotions in your head uh, guiding your actions. And like... Herman would do stuff and in his head Yeardley Smith was one of the voices in his head like motivating him to do stuff. I can't remember anything else about the show. But you all know the uh, Pixar movie I'm talking about. You know the one. I even have it on Blu-ray. But of course, can't remember the name so let's put that on the screen. Inside Out, never mind. <laughs> Inside Out, that's what it's called, right? Okay. Uh, I haven't completely lost my mind yet. My memory is not all lost. Okay, so. Um, Matt Groening is Maggie doing the pacifier. He apparently did the that sound effect for like the early series. I'm not sure if. Uh, if he did it afterwards, maybe he did, maybe not. And Maggie is, of course, has been voiced by other famous actors, none of which I can remember, except for in the Treehouse of Horror, where she was voiced by James Earl Jones. I just, I distinctly remember that, where he's like, "This is truly a disturbing universe," or something to that effect. So you do not have Hank Azario or Henry Shearer. Oh, by the way, there's a poster with Princess Cashmere, AKA April Flowers, AKA Shauna Tipton from Homer's Night Out. Right, okay, so you don't have the character of Kent Brockman in this. I said Hank Azario and Henry Shearer did not return to do voices. So you have as Mr. Boo, uh, Mr. Burns, Mr. Boo Earns, Boo Earns, Mune Haru Samajima, and as Smithers, Hiroshi Uchi. Yes, those guys. Everybody knows those guys. Ah, Mo, Mo Sislak. See, I remember not only his first name, but his last name. And also Barney. I guess Barney, yeah, Barney was definitely an established character at this point. Yeah, Bart, I am so Crunchy the Clown. Anyways. That was a terrible impression. So, I did mention Matt Groening doing Life in Hell, yes, where Binky the bunny has two ears and Bongo has one ear. I mentioned that Bongo was there because you fight Bongo, but... Pinky was the one with two ears, and Bongo has one ear. That's how you can tell those two apart. Ah, there's Bleeding Gums Murphy. On the TV there, you got Lisa. No, not Lisa, Maggie on the TV. Ah, there's the little baby. I don't know the baby's name. Nobody does. I'm not gonna bother looking it up. I'm not gonna bother putting it on the screen. It's just a baby who's apparently the nemesis of Maggie, which I've already said, but I'm going to say it again. 
Ah, there's Space Mutants on the arcade game and a Xenomorph that is actually Marge. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to Homer for like half a second. Okay, well at my next opportunity. Oh, and there's the Simpsons arcade game in the Simpsons arcade game. How meta. So yeah, I'm gonna do Homer again just so that we can see his idle animation. I'm not sure I showed it off. If I did, whatever. I'm gonna show it off again. I don't know who those characters are. They're like nobody. I didn't look up who this character is. I didn't see it on uh, online on the wiki, so he's just some guy who's like a boss. I d definitely don't think he's a character on the show. Back to Homer for a second here. Okay, just do your idle animation. Oh, he's gonna be interrupted. Oh yeah, I did do his idle animation. It's just so short that I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, I may as well beat this boss, or at least try to. Ooh, the sound is a little iffy right now. <laughs> the sound effects for the game. That is definitely a product of emulation. Sometimes the emulators they don't they don't do so well. Sometimes the screen will be tearing all over the place where like part of the screen won't scroll as fast as the other part of the screen, which is definitely not supposed to do, and often the sound is a little weird. Springfield Boot, otherwise known as Springfield Forest. Ah, uh, there's that bear again. So what's interesting also about this arcade game is the, the characters that you can play uh, as are, you know, you can pretty much almost do a one-to-one -one comparison with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles characters. Ah, uh, by the way, there's the Bigfoot, the Homer Bigfoot. Apparently Bigfoot has also appeared on the series in other episodes. Ooh, there's the beehive. The bees are attacking me. Oh no, not the bees, not the bees, oh! Binky again is in the tree. No, that's Bongo. Bongo! You know, I kind of wish that I was able to change the number of lives that I have, but apparently there's no toggle for difficulty of the game or lives that you have to play the game. You just kind of play one level and of difficulty and that's it. Oh, there's Nelson. Nelson Muntz. Hey, I also remember his first and last name. That's important. I believe the character before Martin Van Buren, I think his name is. There's the three-eyed fish. I didn't see that listed on any wiki, so that that was like in the episode where they find the three-eyed fish in the water and then Marge serves it to Mr. Burns and he like spits it out. He was like trying to become mayor or something and that ended his political career. How quaint, right? Someone spitting out a fish on an animated show ends their political career. <laughs> Ah, there's Sideshow Bob! Who knows if this is before or after Krusty gets busted, where Sideshow Bob is evil. But obviously he's helping you out in this, so... Maybe he's still good in this?
So I was thinking it would be interesting, like, what if they remade this game now with all the characters and all the Simpsons lore that they have access to? But in, in a way, they kind of did that with the Simpsons game. The one where you, like, walk around Springfield and you can play as the different Simpsons and... You, like, pick up collectibles and stuff. There's been so many Simpsons games, I'm not sure if uh, everybody watching will know exactly the one that I'm talking about, but it's the one that came out for, like, GameCube, PS2, and PS3. Maybe not GameCube, not 100% on that. I actually used to have the PS2 version of it, but then I was like, you know, maybe I can try to get the PS3 version. And I did, I was actually able to buy it from the UK. And because the PS3 is not region locked, I was able to play it. I'm going to say a little rant here about physical media. I think everybody should support physical media because uh, I've been trying to look for certain TV shows online and there are ones that are from like Amazon Plus or whatever and Netflix and stuff like that. And you can't find physical copies of these things because they of course want you to subscribe to their service and, and, and do it that way. And now, because of that, you can't find physical media of any of these shows. And personally, I think they should do it. They really should expand their market to people who don't subscribe to their service. Because, you know, I want to watch certain TV shows. And what's even weirder, some of them have been released on physical media. But right now, they're like... Some of the shows, like for example, The Boys, it's in its third season. But the third, third season has not come out on physical media. It's nowhere to be found. And The Umbrella Academy, you can find the first season, you can find the second season, but good luck finding the third season. That's not around. Allegedly, they're going to be released. By the way, I'm fighting against donuts. So, I, another one was like the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. I really wanted to have that. Eventually I did find it. And it looked legit, but I honestly can't say for sure if it is legit. And I don't, I don't really like that. I mean, maybe they did release it in some country and that's the one that I got. But I can't confirm that for sure. It's impossible to know. Another one is like the Orville, season one and two. Again, released on physical media. S season three, no, nowhere to be found. Daredevil season one and two, that was released on physical media. And eventually I did find the third season, but again, I don't know if that's official or not. It might be. Oh, there's Maggie letters, which I can use to attack nuclear power plant guys. So, in other words, I'm just saying these companies should really put their stuff out on physical media. Because you know, one day they're going to take that thing off of their service, which happens all the time, and then nobody's going to be able to watch it ever again because it'll be gone. It's like on Netflix, I was trying to watch All the Family Guy. I'm like, you know what? I'll see if I can watch All the Family Guy. Where's the audio? I think... Who the hell are you? The audio went out on me for a second there. Not completely out, but uh, like went down. So yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to watch All the Family Guy. So I'll start from the beginning. And then they just removed like season one through ten or something like that as I was watching it. And now they're just gone from the from the service. Why? Who knows? Who knows? But they are. So now I'm like, well, what's the point now? Now I can't watch it. Oh, 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 but this is a good point to pick Marge. 
and let her get electrocuted. Because we can see that she has rabbit ears. Yes, at some point in time, it was going to be canon that Marge would have rabbit ears under her hair. But apparently that whole idea was scrapped. I think it makes sense. I mean, Simpsons are animated, but they're somewhat supposed to take place in reality. And people don't have rabbit ears, as far as we know. This giant bowling ball? Definitely not in the series, though. Uh, but this is, this is Dreamland or whatever, so... It makes, it makes sense in that respect. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna rotate characters. Why not? Back to Homer. Why stick to Bart all the time when I can change characters? The only one, only one I don't particularly like is Lisa. Like I said, her attacks seem a little useless. Oh yeah, so I was saying that these characters are kind of like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle characters. So Marge is kind of like Donatello because she has a long reach. And Homer, I would say he's kind of like Raphael because he has a short range attack. Whereas Bart has a slightly longer range attack, so he's more like Michelangelo. And then that would leave Lisa to be Leonardo. But you could kind of shuffle those around. The only one for sure is Marge, because she has the long range attack. Wow, this guy's taking forever. All of a sudden, the uh, difficulty spiked upwards. A little editing note for everybody listening, as well as myself. I'm not <laughs> looking forward to editing this afterwards, because uh, it's going to be a long edit. And why have I taken so long between Let's Plays? I haven't uploaded a video in a long time. Well, it's because, as per usual, I'm doing my own thing where... Oh, I gotta hit buttons to wake him up. Anyways, let me do that. What, what's the point of having the computer players? I guess they're like... They could theoretically get points or something. I don't know, whatever. So, I've decided, hey, I have so many games, like... Again, physical media-wise, I have a ton of games just, like, overflowing all over the place. PS3, PS2, PS1, Sega Genesis, NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo, I mean, like, Wii, Wii U, uh, <laughs> Xbox, it's, it's uh, PS4, PS5, it's all over the place. Oh, there's the anchor guy who's not Kent Brockman, by the way. So I've decided, you know what? I have so many games. I've downloaded so many games. I've bought so many games. I'm going to try to finish some of the games that I own. I'm, I'm going to do that. And I can't remember what I was playing before. What was it? Uh, it doesn't matter. The point is, right now I'm playing... Paper Mario Color Splash, which graphically I like. Story-wise, I, I kind of like it. However, the battle system and the way that you constantly have to like revisit levels and it's like such a slow process of revisiting levels. You like sometimes you can't do 100% because you have to like get all of the toads to help you out. The Toad Rescue Squad. And, uh, by the way, this robot, I don't think that appeared in the series at all. So you have to keep coming back to levels, and you get the giant paint star, and then that'll open up some stuff, and... It's just weird, and, like, there's so many toads, like, there's so many... Mario characters that they could utilize, but somehow, I seem to remember reading this, that there was some 
Nintendo directive that said no, you can only use Toads as characters. And that really hampers the storytelling and the lore and the gameplay where you just you constantly run into different colored Toads. It, you, you can't really get distinct characteristics from a blue toad and a purple toad and a green toad. I mean, who cares, right? And the biggest drawback of the whole game is the battle system. It's, in, it's ridiculous. Oh, by the way, I also have Nintendo Switch and it says Paper Mario Origami, whatever. Pretty good. I like that one. I actually finished it. So that just goes to show how much of, of the battle system in Color Splash really just hampers the gameplay. You got these cards which you have to color in and theoretically the more you color in the more powerful they are so you could hypothetically not color them all if you only if you know that the enemy has just a little bit of health left. But you, you never know how much any of these enemies have health. You don't pay attention to that sort of stuff when you're playing the game unless you're like really into the stats and stuff. So it ultimately just comes down to you're going to color in all your cards immediately. So then eventually you just stop buying non-colored car uh, colored in cards and you just buy the colored in ones because you're going to color them in anyway. So why not, right? And there's all these different types of attacks, sure, but when it really comes down, down to it, not that many different ones, and when you're actually playing the game, you only really use a handful, like you use your stomp ability, you use the hammer, and the rest of the time you can use fire flowers and stuff like that, because they do so much damage. So you're like, more often than not, doing three types of attacks. And the the bosses are really dumb, because a lot of the time they'll be... They'll be sub, uh, weak to certain types of attacks. Sometimes they telegraph it to you and s tell you what they're weak to. And sometimes they're not. So you have these thing cards, which are basically like giant fans or barbecues or teapots or whatever, giant saucepans that you drop on them. So like you either have to guess what the, the boss is weak to, or you gotta hope that you can figure it out like I hope that it telegraphs it to you and sometimes if basically if you go into that battle and you don't have that card you can't leave the battle so you're done that's it you're done automatic game over if you don't have it so you should be able to beat the boss if you don't have the ultimate thing but you can't because you have to have that thing and you have to, if you haven't gotten the thing well too bad for you and uh, the worst one I found so far, by the way, <clears throat> here's a Kabuki guy, Kabuki man, Kabuki warrior, sorry, he's, he's not in the TV series, I don't think. So anyways, there's like uh, this quiz, quiz so, quiz show. Sniff it or whiff it, I believe it's called. And first of all, you have to have specific cards. And it's like these mini games. Get, tell us what this card is. And then you go in your card inventory and you pick out the, the card. If you saw a mushroom, you go into your inventory, you take a mushroom, you throw it out and say, here, here's, I just saw the mushroom, this is the mushroom. So first of all, if you go in there and you have a full deck of cards, you're not gonna win that mini game. It's it's just not gonna happen. So you gotta get rid of 30 cards from your inventory and buy them from this uh, shy guy or whatever who's standing outside and he gives you cards. And you can only use the card, you can't leave 
you have to use the cards immediately because if you leave then the, the game will change and then again if you don't if you don't have that specific card in your inventory you're done it's game it's not exactly game over but you're not going well actually it could be game over as far as i understand once you go into the bonus round if you lose it's a game over and i really i'm not digging these instant game over scenarios and it's like if you don't have the card in your inventory it's game over because you have to once again you have to go through the bonus round in order to get the thing card and then you use that thing card for a boss so this is it's not optional you have to do this you have to get it perfect you have to go through the bonus round so long long rant short is that yeah i'm going through paper mario color splash again and it's frustrating me but again i really like the graphics and the story somewhat and i just decided no this is what i'm doing now i'm gonna stop trying to buy games and i'm gonna finish the games that i actually have and here we are at the final boss welcome to my world oh man smither sounds wrong it's not even attempt to try to sound like Mr. Smithers. Like, Welcome to my world. Yeah. That's what Smithers sounds like. What else did I play? I played the PS4 version of Shadow of Colossus again. That's fun. I like that one. It almost makes the PS2 version irrelevant, although I I own it, albeit on the PS3 dual game disc where it's also with Eco. I want to play Eco along uh, a Let's Play of Eco because I really like that game. I also want to do a Let's Play of the original Tomb Raider, as well as the remake of Tomb Raider. I have both of those. I have the PS1 Tomb Raider, and then I have the PS3 version of the remake of Tomb Raider. So, eventually I'll get to it. Oh, here's Mr. Burns, finally. Welcome to your grave, suckers. Welcome to your grave, suckers. Oh, man. Mr. Burns is also not sounding very good. Although he is he is saying excellent. At least he's doing that. Excellent. excellent. Smithers, release the hounds. Ooh, I'm toastified, man. Huh. What else did I play? I played... Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild again before Tears of the Kingdom came out and I've finished Tears of the Kingdom. I've lo lost a bit of my desire to like get 100% on it. I wanted to do 100% but now that I've finished it and like not as inclined to do 100% because there's so many side quests and stuff. But maybe one day, give it a rest for a little while. But I'm surprised how quickly I finished it. And I only ended up looking up one or two things. Let me avoid Mr. Burns here for a second look at my game list. What did I play? See, I already forgot. There's something that I hadn't finished that I played again. Well, I'm not gonna remember it right now, I guess. That's okay. But the point is that I wanna finish games that I have. Wow, Mr. Burns has like 
three different phases, and now he's like falling apart. Oh, I'm also replaying Donkey Kong 64. Because I want to get 101% again. I haven't played it in a long time, and I want to play it again. I'm one of the few people who actually like Donkey Kong 64. It does get a little bit ridiculous the further in the game you get, but... I kind of like that there's so much to do and so much to collect. It kind of makes getting 101% in the game a challenge. Whereas, like, some things, getting 100% of the game, not a big deal. But in that one, you really gotta do your work. And even though I've already gone through it, so I basically, some of the cheats that you can use is giving you infinite coins and oranges and stuff like that, I'm still going out of my way to pick up the coins, <laughs> even though I don't need to, but I'll see them and then be like, no, oh, I gotta pick that up. Speaking of which, I really like uh, ukulele. Uh, I sometimes replay that. And I have Banjo-Kazooie uh, for the Xbox Replay Collection. And the only thing I don't like about that is that you can't... Like, so they put in like the hidden stuff that was taken out of the N64 version. And in the Rare Replay Collection version, once you've collected those things, they never come back. And I don't like that. I want to be able to go through the game again and find those secrets again and collect those secrets again as part of like the completion. But now, because I've collected them and they're gone, it's like pointless to go to the areas where those bonuses are at. Because they're not going to be there. Oh, Mr. Burns is dead. But is he really dead? Is that canon? Is is the arcade game canon at all? <laughs> Who knows? Probably not. So now we get to see the end? Yeah. Credits and stuff? I can't remember how this ends. <laughs> okay. I guess they keep the diamond. Oh yeah, so there's credits. So I'll never remember what the game was I was playing just before to finish the game, a game that I own, that I went out of my way to finish and now I can't remember it. So memorable. But uh, there was The Simpsons, the arcade game from 1991. Thank you very much for watching. This has been a Yesterday's News production and I'll see you next time. Thank you.